Called the land of a thousand hills, Rwanda is one of the most beautiful countries in the world. But this tiny, densely populated country in the heart of Africa also has one of the highest infant mortality rates in the world. The average Rwandan dies by the age of 46. Most of Rwanda's 10 million citizens subsist on what they grow, earning less than a dollar a day. They suffer from bacterial diarrhea, TB, malaria, hepatitis, AIDS, and lung diseases. Most Rwandans have no electricity or clean water. The challenges are immense. Rwanda needs doctors and equipment and jobs. 10,000 miles away at Rice University in Houston, Texas, business professor Mark Epstein prepares 20 MBAs for their journey to Rwanda. Epstein and his students are planning to help Rwandan entrepreneurs launch businesses using biotech products developed and tested by Rice engineering students. For years, Rice professor Rebecca Richards Cordham and her engineering students have been creating and testing biomedical products to improve healthcare in developing countries. When Richards Cordham heard about Epstein's work in microfinance, she asked Epstein and his MBAs to combine forces with her students to create commercially viable biotech products for the third world. So it was really wonderful uh, to meet him and to learn about his work in micro-entrepreneurship, the impact that it's had around the world, and then to begin to think how we might team up and um, bring some of the strengths of engineering together with the strengths of business so that solutions that we designed could go from more than just a few prototypes to many, many devices that could be meeting the need they were intended to meet. We are focusing on four health technologies. Three of these health technologies were developed by the Rice Bioengineering Department and one other. And we picked products that had different price points and different markets. So we have this diagnostic lab in a backpack, which has probably got a price point of $1,000 plus. We have a uh, incubator uh, for babies with jaundice with Billy Rubin lights, which has a, maybe a market price of $100 or so. Then we have a dosing device for liquids which has a market value of maybe a couple of dollars. And then we have these micronutrient supplements, which would have a sale price of maybe seven or 10 cents. And so what it does for the students is it provides challenges at different levels. You have different markets, different, each one has different manufacturing challenges, different dissemination challenges, different supply chain challenges. So each of them has different challenges so each the students could learn from each other's projects. It, it, they were projects I thought the students could handle and really make a big difference in really trying to uh, move this forward and possibly solve some global health problems. What we're looking to do is develop a model where some entrepreneur like with the micronutrient supplements, maybe they buy them for five cents and sell them for seven cents. They have a profit. They're gonna make a little bit of money, make a living, but they have an interest in continuing to get supplies and continuing to sell. And it's that commerce model that I think is what can really make a big, uh, uh, provide great help in alleviating poverty and solving glo uh, global health problems.